Hello, and welcome back to XRP Vault, where we bring you the most recent and intriguing XRP news. We're giving away 10,000 XRP to those who are watching. All you have to do is upvote, subscribe, comment XRP is king and watch the video to the end to be eligible. The winners will be picked next month and publicized on the community page of the channel. I believe we all realize how potent XRP might be in reshaping our financial system in the future. However, one topic that is rarely brought up in our community is whether or not these significant organizations actually require anything like XRP. Guys, in this video, I'm going to show you a very intriguing conversation between a group of central bankers and then demonstrate how XRP precisely solves a problem that they claim they are currently facing. The second half of this video, in which I demonstrate exactly how XRP solves the issue that these central bankers are discussing in this clip, will be more beneficial to you if you can pay attention and comprehend what they're saying. Guys, this is one of those videos that will really level up your knowledge, and I highly recommend it. The first part of this video won't be the most entertaining, but the second half will be much more helpful if you can pay attention to what these people are saying and consider how XRP can help address their problems. Please pay attention to what these central bankers claim are the major issues with our existing financial system. And I want to demonstrate to you how XRP immediately addresses this issue. Okay, this is crucial to comprehend since XRP might have the best technology available. However, nobody will accept it if it doesn't genuinely resolve an issue. You will learn a lot from watching this video about the issue that XRP is attempting to solve. And, gentlemen, it will help you realize how valuable XRP might become in the future. And before we show you this video, it's crucial to realize that XRP offers solutions to a lot more issues than just this one. We're actually discussing how XRP may benefit our financial system, particularly at the central bank level. But guys, that is a huge use case that has the potential to add a ton of value to the XRP ecosystem. And it's for that reason that I really want to talk in this video. So let's get things going. I also want to play this video. Additionally, we won't go through everything. But I'll show you guys the most crucial portion and it will actually outline the issue that XRP can resolve. And once I can explain to you people why XRP so expertly resolves this issue you guys will recognize how much of a paradigm shift it will be for our banking system. Pay close attention to this. Please forgive me for wanting to revisit my time in Indiana. In any case, allow me to hint at something that was implied in your presentation. The potential cost savings, convenience of transactions, potential for better inclusivity, and potential for people to have more access to financial services are some of the major losers of digital money, and you can already see some of this happening in China. And yet, in the non-digital world, all of this great globalism is taking place at the same time. The reverse is taking place. And this brings up the topic of legal and regulatory frameworks as well as how the overall regulation of the digital economy will take place at a regional level rather than a global one. That is still a mystery to us. How do you assemble all of these things? Are you considering how to go toward digital currency from the perspective of a central banker? Sincere to say, I have little doubt that the Bank of Banks and this gentleman's guest institutions will continue to operate for hundreds of years. The question is what shape they will take in the coming years. There is undoubtedly a lot of buzz surrounding how much could change. Although I don't believe they are on the verge of a major revolution, as I indicated at the conclusion of my remarks, I do believe there will be some substantial changes in the coming years. And I believe there are numerous advantages to be gained from the digitalization of currency that is currently taking place. More operations will come out of the shadows and into the open realm of the financial system, and more individuals will have access to it. And if you consider the economy as a whole rather than just the financial markets, I believe it is a pretty essential component. Numerous people's lack of economic ties is one of the reasons why certain backward political groups are becoming more powerful, particularly in emerging markets but also in many other nations. And one crucial component of it, in my opinion, is connectivity to the financial system. If you believe that a country's changes would only benefit the wealthy, connected elite while excluding the majority of the population, I believe that this is a crucial element of their bond. 
Therefore, I believe that new technologies have the potential to be truly revolutionary if central banks adopt them, but I am also concerned about the possibility of underplaying some of the things that are happening in the outside world because I believe that trust is an extremely important problem. As Governors Inglis and Patel accurately noted, it is exceedingly difficult for banks to establish a process that goes outside the central bank. This raises the intriguing question of whether verification can truly replace confidence. But if you do have a method to provide verification in a way that is much more evident, such as with distributed ledger technology, you may imagine central banks and potential thieves cooperating to create a system of cross-verification. I'm going to stop it there and just briefly read you the last sentence. One bank does not trust another. They also require a mechanism, perhaps utilizing DLT, outside of the financial system, so that they can collaborate and double-check each other. Guys, that is important. But it's also critical to consider what they say about lowering prices and enhancing financial system accessibility. I truly do believe this is going to be extremely beneficial, so let me now break this down in a very, very simple and understandable picture by simply demonstrating how XRP affects the system. So, folks, there are a ton of different banks right now. And virtually all of the dots on this page, all of these big guys, are meant to represent banks. We won't discuss how XRP transactions are really quick and inexpensive, instead, I want to start by talking about access and cost reduction and how XRP accomplishes those goals. Because I want to discuss how these banks were connected, I believe that is now clear to everyone. Because right now, if this white bank here and this red bank right here were linked, they would establish a connection. If this red bank wanted to connect to one of the smaller banks over here on the left, it would have to build its own connection to that smaller bank. If one of the smaller banks wanted to connect to this white bank over here, it would have to build its own independent connection all the way over there. Then, if one of these smaller banks wanted to link to the blue bank, they would need to walk over here and establish their own connection. As you can see, we are creating a mess of all these different webs, so if one of these smaller banks wanted to connect to one of these banks over here, they would need to create their own connection. In order to participate in the same payment system, all of these banks would need to establish their own connections with one another. The fact that so many banks have established so many different relationships is incredibly ineffective. Because banks are not technology companies, dudes. They don't want to be doing this. Banks prefer not to concentrate on developing these lines since they have other priorities. Guys, consider this scenario, what if, instead of all these banks establishing various links with one another, they simply connected to the same liquidity source, XRP, and utilized XRP for all of those transactions. If that were true, all these banks would have to do is connect to XRP, right? They'd all be automatically linked together after that. This is by far the most straightforward way to integrate all the banks into a single ecosystem. Guys, this significantly reduces the number of relationships you need to have with each institution. And instead of requiring a single bank to establish millions of connections with other institutions, they would only need to connect to the XRP ledger, and then they would be in contact with everyone. The internet is useful for broadcasting information to everyone in your community rather than having to run around with a letter delivering it to every single house. Everything you post on Facebook is immediately visible to everyone. The idea is exactly the same. And I want to start another conversation. Today, trust is something that is crucial. Because in this case, trust is really essential. The reality is that the majority of banks around the world do not trust one another. However, this nearby white bank could not wish to send money to this nearby red bank because they might not trust one another. And this would be connected to that directly. Because they might be concerned about the other bank's business methods, they might not want to fully interact with one another. Because financial organizations have so many problems with compliance. Sometimes, banks from other nations simply cannot cooperate since the government forbids it. And guys, the more of these connections you have, the bigger that problem becomes. Guys, it wouldn't matter what the other bank did if everyone was just connected to the same neutral settlement layer, which is XRP. Soon, you will be aware. 
when you went to the XRP ledger, you would be playing by the same rules as everyone else on that system, on an even playing field. And that significantly lessens the risk issue. You're also on a transparent public blockchain, so everyone can see what's going on. Therefore, you don't need to believe that the bank has the means to send it to you. It was visible on the blockchain. A public, transparent method of doing these transactions greatly improves trust and solves a significant issue that the central bankers were claiming to have. Because banks don't trust one another, they require a mechanism outside of the financial system in order to cooperate. Guys, XRP gives you precisely this. Additionally, it significantly reduces both the cost and the complexity of establishing these connections between all the various institutions. You don't need to have numerous engineers working on separate back-end solutions, you don't want that. Your bank does not need to be connected to 10,000 other banks by technical staff. Instead, all connections are made by simply connecting to the XRP ledger. I thus hope that this movie does a great job of explaining the issue that the XRP ledger addresses in the financial industry. Because I think it's crucial to comprehend this. I'm hoping you now have a clearer understanding of how crucial XRP is to the system. Anyway, gentlemen, I really appreciate your being here. It would mean a lot right now if you could like and subscribe if you like this kind of video.